we are back with another record iron. All right, running this back again. Just want to get as big of a sample size as I can get my hands on. Hopefully my Saturday is not going to go like that <laughs> and I'll go like the 5-0 I went. <laughs> Drawn a thought, we'll uh, do some stirring. most likely right yeah that's adnos so the cool thing about against adnos with uh new card is it does shut down their pentad prisms and their lotus blooms which is really nice Quite a few draws we can do. We just need to hit ourselves a uh, relevant threat here. Sweet. We are professional. another on life all right let's dig a bit mm -mm -mm. more digging That's an Ulamog. That'll be handy next turn, I suppose. But not this turn. We're still cantripping. It's a ballista. We've got one more in us. Mm -mm. So I was trying to hit one more because that's uh, that would have given us enough to um, it would have given us enough mana to where we could still cast New Karn, which would have shut down that Lotus Bloom. So with that in mind, what else do we want to do here? I think we're just going to run out the Ballista on two, because if they go for the Lab Maniac play, we can still interact with that. And 
we'll see if the unlife's good enough to, if we remove it. Spoils. Interesting. Let's see what the name. Add Nas. It only took them a couple cards. Okay. Did they literally just hit it off the top? Because that's impressive. Claims, take out the relics, take out the worm coil. I keep the O stones in and the Ugans in because it can blow up the um life and the artifacts. Um, o stone for the artifacts and um life where Ugan can only hit the um life. Um, and then worm coil is just really just a big creature. Usually has to hit like like what three times for it to be relevant. So I just don't really bother. This hand can form Tron, but it's a little slow to be honest. But I think we get two draws with it to see if we can form Tron on turn three. So I think that's fine. Not the huge fan of this hand, but we'll see if this was good enough. This is a pretty bad matchup, by the way. Like we pretty much lose this one. We're good. We're good. We got Tron. See if uh, see if these stirrings are good enough. The amount that we hit though, those two stirrings was kind of disappointing. I really wanted to hit that Karn. The fact that we hit a Karn in Exile, Exile, two one lives, and they still had an Angel's Grace. That was sad. Ideally here, we're going to go one more turn. Only creature in our deck we can get up is a Worm Coil. Already got the Unlog in hand and the Ballista. Ballista's not that relevant. I think we're just going to run out the Forest. We're going to run out the Ugin. We're going to shoot them for three. And then see if we get one more turn. They're going to pack it, which means they should be winning then. Unless they're just going to end this grace to fade a turn. Hmm, they're just doing it to fade a turn. We're okay with that. 
gives us another shot. If we draw any Tron land, we can Ulamog, um, which would be really sweet. Not that cool. Star. That's a claim. It's not bad. Hmm. So we can claim the Pentad, but they're going to be getting the Lotus Bloom. So let's just run out the Worm Coil. And we'll hold up the nature's claim and see if they go for the Phyrexian on life combo off because they have enough mana for it. Because they have the Angel's Grace one, we're just dead. They might be searching right now. Because they're bottoming, bottoming a good bunch of cards right now. Spoils. Hmm. Okay. Debatably, we may have wanted to Nature's Claim there, um, but the other thing we could do with Nature's Claim now is that we can shoot our own Worm Coil. They did go for the Unlife. Oh, that's sweet for us. So they can play with a gemstone and make an angel's grace to keep themselves alive. But I don't think they're gonna be doing much. So Alright, let's run that back. Pretty good, pretty good. Got managed to get a I'm always happy if we can win against Adnals with this deck because it's so bad. Alright, well we've got Tron turn 3 with a car, which is pretty great. They got double Lotus Boom, which is not great. Need them not to have a pact. 
We're gonna go unlife, okay. We're gonna go power plant. So if they have a pact in hand, we lose. If they don't, I think we got them. So let's see which one it is. Oh, it resolved. Yes, I would like to use this. I would like to get this Trinosphere. <laughs> So this should be game, from how I'm seeing this, because the Lotus Blooms, they can only get one of them, the other one's not going to be castable. So they just decide not to get either of them. They are down to three mana, Pentad's locked down, and on our turn we're going to go get Lattice, and that should be game. Yeah! <laughs> to pull a victory off against them. That's that's pretty awesome. Oh. Solid. Keep this. Gotta love that natural trend. That's a card I haven't seen in a while. Hmm. So I kind of want to keep the Sylvan's Crying in hand and the tower just in case we have we have two threats. And if we lose one, see if that's reasonable. If we can get this uh, Worm Coil in play, we're going to be pretty solid against the Burning Inquiry deck, because they usually don't have a great way to deal with uh, such a large threat, so... Tassiger is absolutely fine. Interesting that someone's playing this deck, though. I feel like Dredge is just a better version of this deck, right? I guess this is not as susceptible to Graveyard Hate, but then why aren't you playing Phoenix? Maybe they just like this deck. I don't know. Maybe it's actually good in the meta, and I'm not aware of it. Oh, Stone's pretty dope. That's Sylvan Scrying a tower. And what we're gonna do here is swing. Expect them not to block. We'll drop an O stone, we'll pass it over. Cool. Yeah, if they swung, we blow up the board, we have two three threes left in the current, so that's 
pretty good. Alright, I'll bring in a relic and drop one Ula Bog. I really do have a love-hate relationship with Oog in this matchup, but it's fine. Because I just hate the fact that it misses Hollow One, but it hits everything else, so that's pretty, a pretty big deal. And this hand's not forming Tron anytime soon, so let's just ship that away. And this hand is, so we're going to keep it. Uh, that's fine, because we can use it to activate the stirrings. So. Hollow one. Oh, no hollow one. Makes my day. Hand. We're cool with that. Pass it over. This hand I don't like fetching up right away. They should be playing Shadow of Doubt, and I don't want to like put the tower in our hand and then it get burning and queried away. So we'll usually just wait until the end of their turn to do it. So cool. They were even nice enough to uh, find us a uh, a card here. And a worm coil. This is great. So they're gonna get Phoenix back. We get hit for six. We got an angler too. How nice for them. Oh, it's awesome. great. Okay, let's get a tower. Okay. So I think we just, like, we're just gonna drop the warm coil, I think, here. Um, cause in the side, there's nothing we really wanna get. They've unfortunately already brought everything back, so the only thing we're shutting down is the looting. And I don't think that's worth it. Here we'd be turning off the Tassigar head if we run out the Worm Coil, so let's go Worm Coil. And then Relic, and then we'll tap the Relic on them. And then we'll pass. So at, at the minimum, we're taking three on our turn. It's unfortunate this Power Plant's not a tower, otherwise we could lock them out of a portion of the game, which would be cool. But with how it's set up now, I think we'll get Karn. We'll run out Karn. And we could run out Bridge. And just lock down the board from an, uh, an attacking standpoint. Still. Because we can go land, sphere, Karn, that. We should be down to one. As long as we don't draw another land. If we draw the land, that hand gets that gets a little awkward because then Flame Wake can attack, or they're just gonna thought seize us and get rid of our Karn. Do they understand the power of Karn? Because if they don't, they might leave it. No, come on, come on, come on. Leave the Karn, take the stirrings. They did. How great. Alright, as long as we don't draw a land, we can actually dump our hand. Okay, we draw another Karn. As much as I like you. It's a little awkward. We can shut down the Phoenixes but we can't, and the Tasker, but we can't shut down that. Alright, so if that's the case, I got one card left. Let's swing. Karn, minus, yes, bridge, bridge, we'll go sphere, target them, 
and we don't want to crack it, so we're just going to pass. They might kill Karn, but that's fine. We got another one. If we Now if we hit a land, we can do the lock. That'll be sweet. A lot of no cards in hand. But they're not flashing back the looting. That's awkward. I thought they'd want to kill the Adept. I mean, use the kill the Karn with the Adepts, but now they can't. Okay, we're good. Play that. Animate that. I don't care. Play this one. Keep the new one. Minus this. Lattice. Play lattice. And pass. Now they've got nothing. Um, my version is kind of like a prison deck now. It, I use it as a toolboxy deck. I can go fetch up these different lock aspects and then uh, pull threats out or board sweepers. So I've been enjoying it a ton. Um, to say that it's every Tron deck, I don't think so. I think I'm definitely in the minority here. Um, there are a couple of Discord channels that I saw I jumped into that they, they, you know, they're also running around with different ideas, but also very little chatter. Um, I think uh, Emma Handy had a list that she ran through a league with for SCG or something as well. So um, not a, I, I think it's going to take a little bit. The sideboard, I think, has a lot of work to do still. I think we have to figure out what the optimal um, gift package is. Like, there might be some cards in my sideboard that even though it seems good um, to have in, in the Wish uh, package right now, it might not be worthwhile because I'm down to, to just the claims. And I'm not playing Thought Knots, which are a pretty big deal. And I'm not playing Thrag Tusk, which are also a pretty big deal. I'm going to have to mulligan this. This hand's pretty suspect. Also suspect. Not doing anything. Guess we'll keep this. Bottom that. Might not even be worth it to show our opponent what we're on. This hand's not really going to win. Let's just figure out what they're on. And then concede game one. All right, they're on blue light control or Esper control. We're good with that. All right, let's bend the those, bring in the claims, and then bend one Ostone, oh, bring in another claim, and we'll run like this. I do. Uh, I mean, I do like the the prison aspect of this deck, though. Um, the amount of games that I've been able to just take over by playing an ensnaring bridge into a lattice is pretty crazy. And being able to fetch up, like this card's actually really impressed me quite a bit, the filigree, uh, filigree familiar. Um, against a lot of burn decks, being able to drop that after a Karn and just being able to gain the two life block, draw a card, and then next turn drop a worm coil, that's been pretty great. Keep this. Formtron, get one redraw. Just gotta find ourselves a threat. No, no, no. 
I'm fetching now. I don't want to get caught out with a shadow of doubt. It's happened before and I don't want it to happen again. And it happened recently enough to where I feel like it might happen. So, there's been a lot of Tron online, so. Whew. Off the top. What is this nonsense? Let's run out the map, and let's run out the tower and just pass. I don't want to show the blast zone yet, just in case they choose to go like a detention sphere or something, and then we can deal with it that way. This is fine. Draw away opponents. We're just gonna start ripping cards out of their hands now. That way they keep this out of death range. They're gonna cryptic us. Yeah, they are. Well, we'll hit them for six. Bouncing the worm coil so we can kill their Jace unless they have a path. Let's see what they go with. Alright, there's the path. Hmm. So if we down tick on the Jace, they can activate the Colonnade. So let's Expedition Map, grab the Ghost Quarter, and we can get rid of that potential play for them. turn I like it I'm just gonna keep taking cards from them for now if they don't want to play anything that's fine with me I'm gonna hold up the other card and sanctum in a hand because next turn we'll be able to play it cast it and get Karn I mean get uh, Ulamog and cast as well I think I might have been able to do it this turn actually but 
I think that's okay. Targeting cryptic. Kind of bounce our card and draw a card. Um, so what we could actually do here is pop our O stone to take the card away from them. But I feel like having the card in our hands more worthwhile. But we'd also be getting rid of snap. They'd have three cards. Let's deny them this draw because uh, we have the other card. So. That might not be worthwhile here, but I want to. I wanted to see if it is. So, mm. that's pretty cool. I like this new Jeffrey. Okay, that's gonna wrap up the game. All right, let's see if we can get this other one. Slower Tron hand, but it does assemble it. I think we're gonna run out. We're gonna go Sylvan Scrying and fetch up the land right now. Cause it's a lower chance they have spell. Okay, they have spell snare. So uh, I was figuring that there's a lower chance that it's gonna get countered, and then the following turn there would be a higher chance they'll get countered because they'll have two mana or at least. So. All right. So with this how this played out we're actually going to hold off on cracking the expedition map see if we can get to um the other get the other trying piece in our hand you want to opt sure I have to crack the map right now. I don't think we do. And we'll claim the stone. Run out of Karn. Oh, 
Hopefully they don't have the Pierce. Nope, they don't. If we minus card, I'll be at three, which should mean it should still be alive, which is good. Um, what do we want to fetch up, though? <clears throat> I think Lattice is our best bet here. Not Lattice, um, Liquid Metal. I know an odd choice, but we'll be able to start uptaking and landing them until we get uh, Tron online, right? Because that's what it's here for on top of shutting things down. So hopefully they don't kill our car and then we can do some fun stuff. Teferi, kind of rude. They're just going to uptick. Karn's going to die, but at least we get their colonnade. Pretty tragic, they took our... Map. Mm -mm -mm. We're just gonna run out O-Stone. Sad to lose a liquid metal coating. I really like this card. And if they don't get rid of our O stone, we're gonna have to pop it and wipe the board. That's awkward. They're gonna bounce our O-Stone back to our hand. See if we get to resolve this map. We do. All right, let's see if this O stone gets countered. It doesn't. Well, if that's the case, I just want to wipe the board. Hmm. 
We don't have enough after Karn to cast Ulamog, unfortunately. Oh, that's an interesting little thing. I didn't think we were going to get to keep him. Do I get an Ugin as well, then? Ho ho ho! See, we don't even need game one, folks. We don't need it! I'm just give it away. This has two Tron pieces, so it meets my quota, but this hand looks pretty suspect. source, a sphere, a star, a map, a lot of things we can hit here that'd be pretty sweet. Once we instantly die here to our opponent, Ugin should clean up this game for us. Look at this prowess and shenanigans that are going on. They want to run it into this worm coil. They do. We are willing to do this block. Sure. Do they know? We've got this baller Ugin. I would like to minus one. I would like to gain three life. I'm not going to swim with the Death Toucher just in case they have some uh, hasty shenanigans. And we're not really in a rush here. We, we're going to be bringing around the 15, dropping a worm coil, wiping their board again. Like We're just trying not to give this game away because we should have this game unlocked at this point. Phoenix, sure. So 
So, let's shoot the phoenix. We're gonna crack the sphere. The stirrings. How can I not get Karn? Get ourselves a relic. Play relic and exile the graveyard. Where go? They've got one turn. Nope. I like the relics here more than I like the nature's claims, I suppose. Mm -mm -mm. I am going to cut the Ula mugs, though, so we'll bring in two nature's claims. I like everything else, though. Tron. So we'll keep this. Our quite another faithless. Let's see the long shot, see if we draw the power plant. If not, we'll go forest into stirrings. in the gray, I mean in the revealed zone. Gonna take a good hit here. Hopefully it's just not lethal. Land's good with us. No bolts. Ooh. Ooh. That finale, that's so good. Cause we're dead. <laughs> oh. All right, let's try to do this again. That card is sweet. Uh, that's that's an enjoyable card. Bolt someone, lava spike someone, cast that on turn three, four, three, and we get to do it again. This hand's too slow. Uh, this hand's really not forming Tron. But it's also got our two spells that are cheaper. I think we can keep this. We're gonna bottom that. I don't like this hand, but I'll be honest with you. Um, but we can get a turn three, oh, stone turn four card, and, you know, as long as we keep hitting our lands. And if we're really baller, we're going to hit a Tron piece off the top of this draw. We're not baller. Okay. Do we want a stirrings here or do we want a scrying? I think we want a stirrings. Alright, we'll grab the mine. 
Run off the relic and pass it over. And my logic for that uh, is so I can, if my stirring's there, I, I have a high chance of hitting eight different cards. Uh, but when I scrying, I'm only looking for one specific card. But I need to know what I'm looking for. Where So if I hit the stirrings now, even though I don't have the green source for the scrying later, um, I know that as soon as I get the green source, I will have Tron online. Where if I get the scry scrying now, um, I won't be able to. Now, there is the, the point where I may have wanted to scryings for a forest. So I had the guaranteed four mana, but we're trying to play Tron things here. This Blast Zone might be pretty good against them with all their one drops, but we need to hit one more land. It's a finale and a mountain. It's pretty good for them. But they need some more stuff in the graveyard. Next turn we can blast them to take out the two one drops, which is good. That's a man amorphos. Spike is not good for us, but that should mean they're not playing finale. on death's door. That's it. All right, can't go five zero anymore, but let's see if we can finish this four one. This hand's a slow Tron hand, but it's fine. It's going to be a turn four Tron. Whenever I have decisions like this, by the way, whether or not you want to run out the map first or run out the star into a scrying first, it depends on the matchup if you think the scrying can get countered. But if that doesn't matter, I almost always lead with the... Um, uh, looks like we're going against free wind red. Um, I almost always start off with the, uh, the chromatic into the scrying because it gives you one extra draw in case you can build Tron that way. Um, I'm expecting Blood Moon pretty quick here though, so we do want to get our hands on a forest. Okay. Oh, they did Collective Defiance? Mm -hmm. Discard their hand, draw a new one? Okay. Interesting. Alright, so in this case, because we drew the draw, uh, Tron piece, um, we're going to use the Silver Scrying and the Urza's Mine here to finish off Tron, and then we can use uh, one of the maps that we have for the Force if we need it. doesn't have much so we're gonna run up this worm coil I was really scared there cuz they uh they had that old three man on turn one but uh, seven man on turn three seems to be good enough 
Ooh, that's an ensnaring bridge. Cool, cool. But what our opponent doesn't know is that we play Karn, the great creator, and we get to lock them out out of this game. So, uh, a big deal, opponent. But you're done here. <laughs> they tried to lock us out of the game. They didn't know that we were the real control deck in this matchup. All right, I'm going to get rid of the relics, bring in the claims, and I'm going to take out an Ulamog and bring in a claim. If our opponent can finish sideboarding. I really got to start thinking about what I want to play in standard, though, guys. Gotta start thinking about that. I was uh, talking to my friends yesterday, and they're saying that uh, the uh, mono red deck and the Simic deck were the ones that were really tearing up the tournament scene um, yesterday. So that might be where I had to lean. I have a friend that can just hand me just guy control, and then I can. I'm pretty certain I can build an A deck in standard though. So I can. I have to see where I want to go with that and. Uh, let's check it out. After this match, I'm gonna take a quick break. Grab a. Bathroom run, get some water, and then I'll be back and we'll run another league. And then I'll probably call for that night after the third league. Opponent's still deciding. We've got Tron. We've also got Blasto, which might be good in this matchup, uh, depending on which pieces they have to lock us down. Um, and then we also have the ability to go fetch up a forest here for Sil with Sylvan Scrying in case we do need to like Nature's Claim something. So this is pretty sweet. Ever think about running a catheter and a camelback so you never have to get up? Quality streams when you can stream while streaming without the stream ever know you're streaming. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm that hardcore. Although that would be quite an interesting way to ensure that you never have to get up. At that point, I can just uh, I should also just get a um, what is it the the pack that gives you all your nutrients. <gasps> Are they gonna liquid metal coating us? Are they gonna carn us? That'd be interesting. All right, well, uh, I just foresee them carning us. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go get a forest. I'm thinking they're just gonna like do a ritual and then carn us.
Yeah, he... He, I could see that for sure. I just hope it's not with the Karn and it's just with the spells. Because if it's with spells, we have some replacements. If it hits the mine, we can play it. Here's the ritual. Is he in a, there's the Karn. Well, that should be game because we can never go above two mana now. So we're done here. Alrighty. Let's run that again. No, because uh, he activates it and upticks. He activates it on my land and then upticks on the land and then it gets rid of it. So he just does that every turn. No, no, he doesn't have lattice. So you use liquid metal on one of our lands and then he upticks with Karn on the land. And then it just, I, I get, I lose a land every turn. Because that's, we do the same thing. We just leave it in our sideboard so we never have to draw it. They're obviously just doing the main board plan with it. Yeah, it is real dirty. Especially if you can power it out like that. That's, that's what we want to do as well. But, uh, you know, sometimes they get to have some more fun. There was someone that posted um, that new uh, Ugin's Conjurer that's on, you can cast it for X. And then there's the spirit that you can cast uh, when you cast something. Ah, oh, this hand's real close. I hate, like I said, I hate this hand though. There's a really high chance we get nothing in the route of this game. Mm mm mm. Well, we're gonna get. We're gonna. Let's try it. Yep, there's it on top. We're professionals. Um, let's get an extra draw, just so we can uh, see if there's anything else that we want to hit. for Blood Moon. Okay, so I think our plan here, depending on what our opponent does, but we're probably going to just run out Karn, and then we'll fetch up Liquid Metal Coating, and then we'll turn their Karn into an artifact on their turn. No, wait, no, we can't, because Liquid Metal Coating is going to be shut down. Hmm. Do we want a spyglass? There's the lattice. If we sp If we go get spyglass, we shut down both Karns, and then next turn we'll have Ugin. Doesn't seem bad. And then we can expedition map for the blast zone, blow it up, and then retain control of the game. I think that's what we're gonna do.
They've got mm-hmm. Motlin, Rabble Masters, and a Lattice. Okay. So they can go like... They can take out our Planeswalker, and they can take... Or they can just drop this and swing at it for one. Um, but we're okay with that. They don't have a way to get rid of the Spyglass. Rival Master and hit Karn for one. We get to Ugin, wipe the board, and then next turn kill Karn. Oh, they just went for us. Okay, let's expect that expose. That's what they should do. All right, so we'll go Ugin. Now, if we down tick for three, they can play Collective Defiance and take him out. So let's just up tick and take out the Rebel Master. And then we'll pass. Back to the same spot. I think we're just gonna shoot Rabble Master again. Because if we down tick to wipe out the Rabble Master and the tokens, Guggen would have been once again back at a place where. Seven minus it would have been at one after that. This way, where it only takes the two, and we're not really that worried about it. We can shoot the car in our turn. Um, we're gonna go back up to nine, and then we crack the map, get blast zone, play blast zone, fade a turn over to them where they really shouldn't be able to do anything. Like they have infinite rabble masters. Got a lattice and defiance in hand. Mm -mm -mm. Shoot their Karn, play O Stone, crack map. Crack O Stone, wipe the board on our turn, cast Karn and Lattice. Seems good, I think.
See if they want to send the damage to our planeswalkers, because we're definitely okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Collected to find it's a sorcery speed. So unless they have a bolt, we should be okay. Oh, honestly, we can just go um, fate counter on Karn, then blow up the board to keep our Karn, and then have a backup Karn in hand. I like that. It does expose us for a little bit in case they have like an abrade or something on our O-Stone. Hmm. That's a bit awkward because now we can't crack our O-Stone. If we crack it... No, we're okay with it. it. Well, no, we're not, because it, it locks down the entire board if we go the route I was thinking. Hmm. Do we crack O-Stone? Crack O-Stone, they have a card, they can activate it. We have a card we can activate, and then wipes the board. Um, we can go one, two. Man. Do we want to activate this O-Stone? All right, we've got 14 mana. So if we crack it, they if they uptick it at six, that's bad for us. But if they down tick, if they down tick, we'll be able to... Go get a ballista and kill it. Let's try it. We need them to down tick here. They didn't do anything with it. They should have at least up ticked. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go. Oh wait, we can't get ballista. Okay, well that's fine. We're gonna go Karn. Let's go get Warm Coil. Yeah, ballista can't be activated. If we could have fetched up Ulamog, I agree with you. Would have been great. If they have land Paretic, um, we can at least still... Because uh, they can drop Lattice if that's the case, but we'll still be able to kill Karn. And they'd be locking both of us out of the game until we kill their Karn, and then we win with their Lattice. So I don't think they'll do that. If they fetch up Ensnaring Bridge, we're going to go get Lattice. <laughs> because eventually, um, we'll win because of the Worm Coil.
this double Karn business is, uh, it's real interesting. Okay, are they gonna do it? I don't think it's a good call for them, but... Are they gonna drop the lattice? Like, they know that if they drop the lattice... That... Okay. That's fine. Because they're down to just lattice in hand. They go get ensnaring bridge. Right, they can minus for ensnaring bridge. And then the drop lattice, but if they do that lock, we win. So. Yep, there's a bridge. Okay. We have out still. Kind of. We need them not to draw land. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's Simeon. Okay. out of the game we can't attack and they can at least play something every turn so unfortunately because after uh, yeah because we don't have our own card to lock them out of the game as well so i think this is it folks do they have a way to get through the worm coil i imagine they do right they, they eventually hit their artifacts yeah, we can't deck them, and they're going to hit eventually hit enough artifact removal to just win the game. So we're done here. I don't want to... If I, if I was playing this by myself, I might consider going through all that, but I, I don't feel like making you guys sit through all of that. I, I really don't think there is a scenario where we win, though. So, all right, folks, uh, that's it for the...